Dear Indian friends, greetings from Bellitalia Tontotto and welcome back. I am Caterina Brazzi Castracane, I am an historian and during this month in collaboration with the Italian Culture Center in New Delhi, I will share with you two conferences about uh, the wonderful city of Naples. This is our first uh, appointment uh, and uh, the conference uh, uh, that I'm going to uh, have is about the history and the secrets of uh, uh, one of the most popular city of the south of Italy. So uh, let me share with you my screen to start uh, together from the first point, the title of the conference that is Naples History, Secrets and Masterpiece. The idea uh, that I had to create this conference is to um, go with you in a sort of virtual tour through the uh, historic center uh, to discover 10 different secrets that are hidden inside palace and street of downtown. To understand which city is Naples today, we have to start uh, saying that uh, the first name of the city was Kuma and uh, According uh, to the historians, Kuma uh, was uh, a Greek colony that was established uh, in the area uh, of the island of Megaris, uh, the same area where Castel del Lobo today stands. Um, they decide to call the city Partenope. Um, in honor of uh, the siren who, uh, according to Homer, the poet Homer, had fallen in love uh, with uh, Odysseus and uh, after had understood that he was immune to her charm, decided to die. Uh, Parthenope was uh, a small village but with uh, a rule of the first importance uh, in the south. And this is the reason why a lot of different population, uh, also the Etruscans, try to um, win the city. And uh, the inhabitants of uh, the Parthenope decided to Mm, create uh, and uh, found another city that could be more defensible by the others. This is the reason why they decide to found uh, Neapolis, that just means new town. Since uh, for 74 BC, this is the name of Naples, new town. Uh, the first uh, important part uh, of uh, the history of Naples is related uh, with uh, the Romans. And about that period, uh, we could say that uh, we can divide the history in two parts. The first one that ended with uh, the 79 AD the year of the generation uh, of the Vulcan Vesuvio, and the second period related with uh, the empire. A lot of um, noblemen and uh, uh, men full of culture decide to uh, spend a part of their life in Naples, including uh, the writer Virgil and also the emperor Tiberius, who decide to realize two palaces, the first one in the island Capri, the second one in the small village that is now called Sperlonga. After the last emperor of one time, um, Naples uh, um, became just one city of the south. 
Um, the second important moment uh, of um, the history of the city is related uh, with uh, the dynasty of the Hauteville and in particular uh, the figure of the most uh, in the first importance uh, is the Emperor uh, Frederick II of Staffen who decided to transform Naples in uh, a cultural point uh, of the south and uh, um, he decided to establish the first university in Naples, university that still today is dedicated to his name. After the Orville, the second dynasty uh, that ruled the government in Naples was the Angevin. As you can imagine, uh, just hearing uh, the name, uh, the Angevin uh, was a branch of the French house. The king of first importance uh, for the government of Naples was uh, Charles I, who decided to establish a new castle, a new pastel palace inside uh, Naples, where uh, housed the administration and the government of the city. This castle is called uh, Castel Nuovo and is uh, the castle that still today is uh, in the center of the city, in front of the sea. The third important dynasty is the Spanish government by the dynasty of Aragonensis. They have the government of the city for three centuries and they transform Naples in one part of the Spanish Empire. During the century, this city grew and uh, uh, grew to become uh, one of the most important uh, city in Europe. This is the reason why um, we can notice that at the end of the uh, 17th centuries, Naples uh, uh, have become the biggest city in Europe with a population of 3,000. Um, in that moment, uh, Naples uh, was a sort of uh, modern city with uh, a different kind of needs. First of all, to uh, create a new quarter where housed the uh, people that were arriving from all the other parts of the world to see the city. The Spanish government chose to realize a new quarter near the historic center and the Habor. As you can see in the map, this is the historic center, this is the Habor, and the, this part is uh, the new quarter that were, was established by the Spanish government. The name of the quarter is still today Quartieri Spagnoli and uh, was, uh, um, it was the most important uh, architectural uh, transformation that we um, could see in Naples. Um, to transform the city, uh, a lot of different artists gave their uh, uh, works and their help. Uh, today we will talk about the architect Cosimo Fanzago, who uh, worked a lot in different uh, palace uh, churches and for different families. And the second artist that we uh, will uh, um, talk about is is Michelangelo Merisi da Caravaggio. Uh, the last part of the history of Naples uh, is related with the Barbans. They decided to transform Naples in uh, one 
of the most beautiful uh, cultural capital uh, in Europe. And they decide to create uh, inside the city um, a lot of palace, museums, and also theater and uh, opera house. In this image, you can see the name of one of the most important opera house in the world that is called Real Teatro San Carlo that was established by the Barbans at the end of the 18th century. Um, the government um, of uh, the Barbans was just interrupted for a few periods uh, when the government of the city was ruled by two uh, parents of the Emperor Napoleon Bonaparte. First of all, his brother Giuseppe Bonaparte, that you can see in this uh, painting, and uh, in the, for the second time, his brother in law Joachino Murat, that you can see in this other painting. After 1815, the Bourbons uh, could come back to the throne and they will rule the city until the 1861, that is the year when Naples uh, became part of the uh, Italy, of the Kingdom of Italy. And uh, what about today? Today Naples is uh, um, problematic fantastic, uh, colored uh, city, full of patients of uh, cultural heritage, of full miracle, of uh, um, a lot of different uh, kind of uh, um, amazing ideas and uh, imagination and creativity and uh, a sort of complex heaven uh, in earth. And uh, today we will uh, find together, we will discover together 10 uh, different aspect that I called the secret of this city that are for me the first approach that we could have to uh, understand uh, this uh, uh, complicated city. The city that, uh, as uh, the writer Goethe uh, said, is uh, something that you should uh, see and then you can die happy. Secret number one, the cloister of Santa Chiara. As you can see in this photograph, the cloister and the church of Santa Chiara are posed in the center of the town and uh, they are part of a um, complex that was uh, realized in 1319 to be a sort of Franciscan citadel. And uh, the project was designed to create two cloisters and two convents, one for the friars and the second one for the nuns. Um, in this uh, map, you can see that the project was to uh, realize uh, inside the cloister a sort of secret garden where uh, the mm, natural aspect of the world uh, has plants or uh, trees could uh, have a dialogue with another kind of decoration, the ceramic tiles. Actually, what we can see today is uh, a new restoration because uh, uh, during the Second World War, uh, the church and part of the cloister were partially destroyed. But uh, today, this is the 
first effect that we can have just entering inside the cloister. A sort of secret garden, as the medieval said, is a ortus conclusus, full of colors. This is a landscape realized just with the uh, maiolica tiles uh, that were um, worked during the 18th century and uh, the uh, atmosphere is uh, full of peace calm and uh, this is the for the m most important aspect uh, still today because uh, you have to imagine that the cloister is uh, surrounded of uh, different palace street uh, traffic in the uh, in one of uh, the most popular part of the city and uh, uh, the silent is uh, something uh, that is not so easy to find in Naples, but inside the cloister you can feel uh, the peaceful atmosphere that is related with the faith uh, for who believe, but also with the miracle of this kind of decoration. Secret number two and three, Naples Gourmet. We have to say that one of the most popular aspect in Naples is related with food. And I choose for you two shops that you have to visit when you will be in Naples. First of all, Gayaden, the first chocolate shop in Naples, established in 1884. Is, uh, uh, one of the shops is nearby the cloister of Santa Chiara and uh, you have to try all the different kind of chocolate that uh, um, still today um, decided to product with natural uh, ingredients and with uh, the same love and passion of the tradition. The second shop is a pastry shop. Is, its name is Scaturchio and uh, you uh, could uh, um, find there a lot of different pastry, but three of them are the, the most important. The sfogliatelle, the baba in the form of Vulcano, and the chocolate with liquor. Three great aspects of the uh, traditional uh, Napoletanian kitchen and uh, three uh, different pastry that uh, you can uh, and you have to eat to understand which is uh, the real uh, flavor of Naples. Full of sugar, you can discover the fourth uh, secret that is uh, the statue of the Veiled Christ. Uh, you uh, can find this statue in a, a private uh, chapel that is called Cappella San Severo and uh, is uh, something that could really uh, represent the miracle of the history of art. The Cappella San Severo was, according to legend, a part of the garden of the Di San Gros Palace and was transformed in a private chapel uh, during the 17th century. Uh, one prince of that family, Raimondo Di Sangro, decided to transform the chapel in uh, uh, one example of the Baroque architect architecture and uh, he called one uh, young artist, uh, his name is uh, Giuseppe San Martino, to realize uh, uh, the most uh, uh, wonderful statue of uh, that period. Inside uh, this uh, um, chapel that is uh, uh, 
full of baroque creativity, um, dynastic pride, beauty, and also mystery. You can see uh, the light and uh, the statue all around uh, the uh, protagonist of the chapel. You find what uh, the historians uh, called a miracle of art. This masterpiece is uh, just a statue of uh, the body of Christ dead. And uh, the uh, very important aspect uh, is that was uh, um, sculpted just from the same block of marble. The body of Christ is just covered in a transparent shroud and you can feel that that body was alive till the moment before. Look to the details because you can understand which is the peculiarities of this statue. Look to the head and face and the same aspect on the legs or also on the hand. You can see the fingers and the reality of the body. The same aspect that you will find on the food. For who believe this is an incredible uh, proof of uh, that God exists. But uh, even if you are not uh, a believer, this is uh, one of the masterpieces of uh, the art. And something that could uh, uh, let you feel that there is a sort of miracle inside the art. The next secret is the area of the Archaeological Museum. The National Archaeological Museum is uh, one of the most ancient and important uh, museums in Europe, not just in Naples, and uh, is uh, housed in a historical palace, was uh, established by uh, the King Charles III of Bourbon, and uh, he decided to put uh, inside this palace different kind of collection that today are divided in five different collections. The most important of them is the Farnese collection that um, was uh, divided into two museums, the Archaeological Museum and uh, the Museum of Capodimonte. In uh, this collection inside the Archaeological Museum, you can find sculptor has uh, the uh, bull, Farnese bull, that was discovered in Rome in, on the bath of Caracalla in 1545, but also the bronze statue that was discovered inside the Villa dei Papiri near Ercolano, and we talk about Ercolano in the during the next uh, uh, conference, um, where a lot of different kind of status were uh, discovered during the excavation. But actually I have to say that the real secret is nearby the archaeological museum and is the uh, underground. I, uh, it's quite funny to say uh, something like this, but uh, um, you have to know that uh, since 1998, uh, Naples was object of uh, an architectural renovation. And uh, the government, uh, the municipality of the city, decided to create uh, two new underground lines. 
One of them was realized to be called the underground of art with different station that was thought to be um, free museums um, open to everybody and uh, transformed and designed by different kind of architect and artists. In particular, the um, Stazione Museo, Museo Station of the Underground, was realized by Guy Aulenti. And uh, she uh, thought to realize a new kind of uh, rooms where the past and the present and also the future could uh, live together and uh, be linked together with the peculiar um, materials that were used to build the room, but uh, also that uh, could be something that uh, help you to remember the past. Um, in this case, she uh, chose to realize different copy of uh, the masterpiece houses in the um, archaeological museum. In this case, you can see the horse head given by Lorenzo de' Medici to the Carafa family, but also uh, the uh, Ercole Farnese, that one of the most important statue of uh, every time. But also, she realized uh, another room uh, under the um, Stazione della Metropolitana, under the museum station, um, that was called Stazione Neapolis, where they um, chose to uh, house the, um, all the discoveries that were found during the excavation. This room is open uh, all day and is uh, free public for all the passengers that every day um, use the underground. But the uh, great idea of uh, Gaia Olenti uh, doesn't end in this way because she also um, thought to the station has a sort of um, modern art gallery. And uh, one of uh, the, 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 the most important photograph, uh, photographer in Italy, Mimmo Iodice, uh, decided to realize for the corridors of the station a different kind of photograph to uh, realize something new. Something that uh, mm, was thought not just to be uh, a copy or a representation of the masterpiece of the uh, museum, but also to be something new, something can, that can uh, uh, link the uh, huge heritage from the past and the life uh, of every day of the passengers and the travelers. In imagine uh, like these, uh, or also like these, you can feel exactly which is the modernity of this idea. A sort of uh, permanent dialogue between the past and the present uh, that is for to uh, let us understand that all of us are part of the history in every time. Secret number six, the marvelous uh, Farmacia degli Incurabili, an old pharmacy that was realized inside the hospital of Incurable. Just uh, doing a uh, huge and great greystone staircase, uh, this greystone is called Peperino, you can, can find two rooms uh, that, that were realized during the 18th century that 
where the uh, most important uh, uh, place in for that period. An old pharmacy that was realized with uh, the same maiolica uh, of the cloister of Santa Chiara and uh, when you can find uh, all around the world something of 420 multicolor ceramic vases that were used to house the medicine of that time. This pharmacy was allocated in one of the most important hospitals for that time uh, that was realized by a noble woman, her name is Maria Lorenza Longo and now this is the address of the hospital um, and was realized to be the biggest hospital in Naples. You have to imagine that in for that period uh, to have something like uh, 1,600 beds was something amazing, something that was related with the fact that Naples was in that period the most important city in Europe. Inside the hospital, that is still today used uh, in one part uh, as an hospital, you find uh, another little secret. Uh, the Museum of the History of Medicine and Health that is related with uh, the old pharmacy. And when you can uh, understand um, how was uh, modern all the medicine during the 16th and 17th century. From here, you can discover the miracle. The secret number seven, but also one of uh, uh, the most important part of the Napoletanian identity, the miracle of San Gennaro. San Gennaro is uh, the patron saint of Naples. In the side of the cathedral of Naples that is dedicated to the Virgin Mary, there is a, a, a small, uh, a huge chapel uh, where uh, two different uh, amples are posed, and uh, inside. Uh, those uh, amples, uh, there is uh, a liquid in a solid state, which tradition says that is the sense bloody. The history of Ianiarus uh, or Gennaro is a history of uh, a man full of uh, faith who decided to uh, be a priest and after uh, that uh, uh, became bishop of Benevento. Benevento is a small city in the south of Naples. Um, he was uh, um, arrested and uh, sentenced to uh, be thrown to the lions during the uh, persecution by the Emperor Diocleziano. And uh, uh, according to tradition, uh, in, on the 19th of September 305, he found uh, the fed um, just in other ways. According also in this case to the tradition, uh, one woman uh, and her name was Eusebia chose to uh, put uh, the bloody of the man into different bottles and uh, uh, this uh, liquid was uh, housed uh, for um, a lot of century in a different uh, chapel. Uh, today, and every day I have to say, this, uh, this liquid is the protagonist of the miracle of uh, San Gennaro because we have to say that the blood 
melt and uh, it happens uh, three times for a year on the 19th of September, on the 16th of December and also in the first Sunday of May. There are a lot of uh, scientific explication of uh, this uh, um, miracle, if we want to say, and to call it uh, as uh, a miracle. But the most important aspect to understand Naples uh, is that uh, the miracle for the Napolitanians uh, all the year happens and when it doesn't is not a good thing the most important aspect is that every year the napoleon um, wait for the miracle and uh, spend a lot of time just praying san gennaro to realize the miracle and again for them this miracle of the liquefaction of the blood is uh, something amazing that you can see uh, during uh, the huge procession uh, that uh, uh, is organized every year to celebrate the miracle. The amples of uh, uh, the blood of San Gennaro are uh, housed, I was, uh, as I was saying, uh, uh, inside the Royal Chapel of the Treasure. That is a huge example of the Baroque um, architecture and uh, was realized by Cosimo Fanzago, the architect that I uh, was talking before about uh, the Spanish transformation of the city. Um, the um, chapel is also a perfect uh, music hall and uh, during uh, the past century uh, more, many important musicians uh, as uh, Scarlatti, Cimarosa or Percolesi uh, used to be there to direct uh, music and and her uh, just creating something amazing that uh, was uh, able to create something new, uh, a sort of polyedrical dialogue between architect, architecture and uh, faith and uh, music. The secret number eight is uh, just uh, related with uh, one masterpiece one painting that is housed in on the pio monte della misericordia a sort of uh, charity brotherhood that was realized uh, in the first part of the 17th century caravaggio that uh, was in Naples uh, uh, during uh, that period um, was uh, uh, called to create uh, uh, seven different panels dedicated uh, to the seven corporal works of mercy, something that in the traditional Catholic belief is related with uh, to be uh, a good man or woman um, that uh, is be able to help the other uh, to be uh, every day a good uh, Christian and a good man or woman of faith. He decided to realize the just one painting of the seven different aspects, just putting together all the uh, ideas that he had taken from theology and uh, just transforming them in some different uh, by uh, an iconographic point of view. Those are the seven uh, uh, indication of the uh, seven corporal works and he realized something like this 
First of all, works one and two. Visit the imprisoned and feed the hungry. On the right of the left, you can find a human that is visiting an imprisoned and she is giving milk to him. This part of the painting is realized in this first left part. Works number three, Buried the Death. On the background, you can see two men that are carrying a dead man. And the most impressionable aspect is that of the dead. You can see just the food. Look to the light and uh, imagine that this kind of light is able to create the, the atmosphere on the backside of the man, but also on the food of the dead something that is amazing amazing and uh, we don't have a lot of word to talk about the miracle of the art of Caravaggio. Work number four, shelter the homeless. You can see that this man, he is uh, represented in the moment uh, when he is uh, indicating uh, one way, uh, maybe one room where uh, the homeless or the pilgrim could uh, pass the night. Work number five and number six, clothe the night and visit the sick. In the central part of the painting, you can find the figure of Saint Martin that is one of the saints that are related with the ability to be generous and to help the other. Um, that in this moment, he is doing uh, two works uh, together and you can see that uh, the naked is uh, in the front of you you cannot see the face or other part of the body but just the nudity and the part of the court that uh, of the body that needs some help Work number seven, refresh the third. In this case, you can find uh, probably Samson that uh, drinks water and uh, you have to notice the transparent of the water that was realized with peculiar um, white color to create this uh, true effect uh, of uh, uh, the moment when the water uh, arrive inside the mouth of the man. On the top of this representation, you can find uh, the Holy Virgin Mary with a child and with uh, two uh, angels that are flying over the group that you can imagine in this part as a sort of great representation, a theatrical representation. This is the hand of the angel uh, that uh, he's arriving on the head of those um, representation of good men and human. This representation is uh, similar to a uh, presepe. And uh, actually, we have to say that the secret number nine is related with the presepe. What presepe is? Just a uh, nativity scenes, uh, a sort of uh, reconstruction of uh, the uh, night when Christ was born and the uh, reconstruction of uh, all the um, person and the protagonist of that night. 
Uh, in Naples, there is a street that is called uh, the Presepe Street. Uh, its name is Via di San Gregorio Armeno. And uh, you can find uh, all along uh, the here a lot of different uh, workshop that realize figures and statue for uh, the uh, representation of the nativity scenes. Uh, the presepe is uh, one of the most important uh, thing in Naples and they realize uh, something like this uh, and uh, on sale you can find status for any kind of price with a lot of different representation angel butchers uh, chicken uh, different kind of animals and oh, obviously uh, the magi the um, baby and the virgin mary and the father joseph but the most uh, popular uh, idea of Naples is to uh, transform the nativity scene in something that happened in Naples. So you can find also the pizza. To create uh, your own presepe, you could uh, use the special souvenir from Naples, the pizza. That is also the last secret that I want to share with you. As we have seen that uh, in Naples there is a street just dedicated to the presepe, I have to say that in Naples there is also a street just dedicated to the uh, to the pizza. This street is called uh, Via dei Tribunali and inside Via dei Tribunali you can find uh, one important uh, uh, pizzeria that is called Sorbillo that realized since 1935 the traditional Napoletanian pizza. That is just a sort of great bread work with uh, normal and fresh ingredients as tomatoes, basil and mozzarella cheese. You have to remember those ingredients and also those colors because these uh, uh, elements are basically the part and the ingredients for the queen of the pizza, the pizza margherita. That is the most popular pizza in Naples, but is also an historical heritage of our history because was realized uh, for the first time by a baker that was uh, named uh, Raffaele Esposito that is uh, considered the creating of uh, the margherita pizza. Actually, we have to say that uh, uh, was the year 1889 and uh, the king Umberto and his wife, the Queen Margherita, were in that time in Naples to discover uh, one important city of our south. The baker decided to create something for the Queen that uh, um, had the color of the Italian flag, red, white and green. And he realized that this kind of pizza and called the pizza Margherita in honor of the name of the queen. The queen is buried inside the Pantheon in Rome and she is one of the most important women in our history and her name for all the future will be related to the great and marvelous invention of the pizza. If 
I have to say to you that uh, I uh, would like to finish uh, this conference uh, giving to you the uh, real uh, idea of uh, the Italian pizza with uh, different uh, suggestions of ingredients. But you can Google on the web the uh, traditional Napoletanian pizza and uh, I think that you can try to realize it at your home because I would like that you can taste something uh, different and for the next time when you will uh, be in Naples you will taste something that is not possible to realize in other part of the world, including other cities of Italy, just because the flavor and the taste of Naples is, uh, uh, are able to transform all the things that are worked inside one of the most wonderful city of the world. Uh, this, is, this was our last slide, so I stop share my video just to say goodbye to you. We will see uh, during the month with uh, the second appointment uh, of September that will be dedicated to uh, the history of uh, the Vesuvio Vulcan and uh, to the archaeological part uh, uh, around the uh, Vesuvio and the south of uh, Italy uh, and the area to the south of Naples that is called Costiera Amalfitana. See you the next time and thank you very much. Enjoy. Bye.